Today's lesson is on soil permeability. We're going to look at its definition and the things that affect it. Before we do that, however, I want to go over the lab that we uh, did just a few days ago and talk a bit about how uh, soil permeability uh, affects the rate at which uh, water actually goes through the soil. So let's go ahead and take a look at this lab. As you can see here, um, we have basically two soil separates. There's gravel. That's a quarter inch pea gravel that we're using. It's been washed and sorted. And um, in addition to that, of course, we've used a white sand. It's a little easier uh, to look at in the lab. And it's a relatively fine grain type of sand. It's really hard to see the, um, the, the, uh, the actual uh, air pockets in it. And then we have uh, uh, two graduated cylinders, both of which has 100 mLs of water in it. And you'll see how we're going to use that in just a second. And, of course, we use some funnels. We stuff gauze in it so we don't lose any of the soil separates, uh, soil particles, as we wash it down with water. And, of course, uh, the sand gets the same treatment. And I have some ring stands holding them up above some collecting basins um, that we'll be using. And then that way we don't, uh, we don't make a mess of the lab. And what we're going to do next is we're going to take the gravel, we're going to do that one first, and we're going to pour that into the funnel, making sure that, of course, the, uh, the gauze stays in place, to, so it'll do its kind of filtering job. And then we're going to take the 100 mLs of, of water that we found in our graduated cylinder, and then we're just going to go ahead and pour it right into the funnel. And as we do that, uh, we're going to be keeping time of how long it takes that 100 mLs to go through uh, the gravel and into the, the catch basin until it just drops a couple. It doesn't take long for this one, as you can see. It's going to be stop here pretty quick at 6.3 seconds. Didn't take long at all, and you can see some of the uh, pore spaces along the sides of the funnel as it's dripping. We're going to do the same with the sand. Just pour it right down into the funnel, right in between the layers of gauze so that we don't lose any of the soil particles but the first thing we've got to do is we've got to actually clear the the timer so there we go at zero and then we pour it right in and start the timer as soon as it hits the sand as you can see there this one takes a little bit longer uh, the water has to work through all the various particles and work it ways down and as it does that it is making its way to the bottom of the catch basin and it takes about 16, well, actually, exactly 16.752 seconds. So there's a huge difference between gravel and uh, sand. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the um, components of this lab. First of all, if you uh, take a look at this picture of the gravel, you can see all these voids right in here. And they're relatively large voids. And what I mean by voids is a space between all the particles. And you can see there are quite a bit of them. And here's a big void right here and right here. So all those voids are called pore spaces. And the pore spaces really just are filled with air until, of course, water runs, uh, runs through um, the soil matrix. And in the gravel's case, it didn't take long. Once we poured uh, the water in here, it went through these uh, voids relatively quickly and right out to the other end. And like I said, it was 6.3 seconds. That's all it took to get through there. And primarily because um, there was very few obstructions, no obstacles to get in the way. The pores were relatively large, and it made short order of getting from point A to point B. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sand. Now remember, the gravel had large pore spaces, and whereas the sand, when we look at its pore spaces, it's really kind of hard to see them. Here's a pore space there, a little void there, and one there, and there's another one there. And there are, they're all, all over the place, but they're very, very small and uh, hard to kind of see. The problem with that is it, there's a lot of twists and turns, kind of like Lombard Street in San Francisco. So as the water is traveling through this matrix, it's got to make a lot of twists and turns, and it's got to fill all the voids. And eventually, when it uh, gets down to the bottom, it's going to pour out. And on this case, it was 16.75 seconds, about two and a half times longer than the gravel. 
So in other words, if we were to compare the two of them, uh, we would see, like for instance, the gravel would be um, very permeable, whereas sand is less permeable. It's not impermeable, it's just less permeable. Still worked its way down, but it took a lot um, more time to do that. So let's take a look at, a, at, at another picture to kind of give you an idea of what permeable is about. Well, we were to give it a definition, perme um, being uh, permeable basically means that it's the ability of water to travel through the soil matrix. Something that, that has um, high permeability means it travels through qu fairly quickly. For instance, like sand and gravel have a high permeability. Yet on the other hand, if we take a look at something that's impermeable or less permeable, that would be things like silt. Uh, that would be things like clay in particular. And if I were to draw a picture of all the soil separates and particles, we could see that um, this would be, of course, our uh, sand. It has much a larger particle size. And then we have silt comes in next. And then clay, microscopic in its size. And that's going to ha have a huge role in permeability is the size of the particles. Just like in this picture we have here, you can see that there's lots of pore space for water to fill up in here. Not very many obstacles so that uh, water can move fairly quickly through this soil matrix to get to the other side. So it's more permeable. Clay, on the other hand, um, is a little bit different beast because if you look at these little particles, man, you have got, it's really hard to get through there. And in addition to that, because it's so close to the water and because of the, the electrical charges, Water kind of binds or bonds to the uh, clay particle so it doesn't release it very quickly so it gets out faster, or excuse me, slower. So it's almost impermeable in, in some areas uh, of the country. So that kind of begs the, the question, is it directly or indirectly proportional? Well, that's a tough call because um, when we look at, for instance, gravel and clay, you'd think gravel would have much more, uh, many more pores, and that, that would be wrong. Because of all the small microscopic size pores and particles, if we look at, at a similar volume, clay has much more porosity or has more pores, but because they're so small, it's hard for the water molecules to get through. So it would be high porosity, but very, very uh, low uh, in terms of its permeability. Whereas gravel, on the other hand, uh, if we compare it to clay anyway, has less porosity, but it, it, it is extremely um, um, permeable. So in some cases, it would be directly proportional. If we're, if we're maybe comparing gravel with mixed sand and gravel, whereas if you compare gravel with clay, it would be indirectly. So you have to take a look at the, at the soil particles, and you'll have to take a look at uh, the time it, it, it actually takes water to get through that matrix. So I hope that's helped, and we'll see you in the lab. Thanks.